deck building adventure. Okay. Which... Okay. Ooh. Ooh, now you're talking. Are you, are you enjoying this game? I am. It's, it's not... I, I, I would completely understand it if the audience wasn't enjoying this game. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I don't think it's a very exciting game. Uh, I don't think it's a very exciting game. Yeah. End of statement. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a very chill experience, and I'm digging it. For better or worse. So, yeah, I'm digging it. Okay. I'm thinking you would think that the the lack of movement would be frustrating, uh, and it's not. It feels it feels very natural after a while. Let's get Eddie to rumble. Says Rich, how oh, what here? Someone told me you wanted to join our PUBG squad since our recent 13 kill chicken dinner, but are shy to ask. Everyone is welcome, especially you. <laughs> I'll save a seat for you on my motorcycle. I, I appreciate it, but uh, probably not. Probably not. I mean, you know, the, I think it's great that they made the offer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would, you wouldn't get any chicken dinners if I were on your team, that's for sure. Just like a little bit of a line. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little you bit of a should not try way. deck building. You know what? I've played Smash Up. Artisan Neckbeard. I have played Smash Up, and you are right. It is, it's not a great deck building game. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Has Jack played Friday the 13th with the new update shadow? Thoughts on Fake Jason? You know what? I haven't. I I, I was saying that after I, I played it once after you streamed it. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll get into this again. And I played a couple rounds and I didn't get to be Jason. And so I just, and I didn't see the new Jason. So I said, ah, fuck it. I'll, I'll come back to it later. <laughs> and I never did. <laughs> And I never did. Maybe I will. Who knows? Did you, did you ever take a look at that virtual cabin they added? No, I don't even know what that is. What is that? Explain it to me. It's interesting. Okay. I'm assuming you don't know much about Friday the 13th trivia, though. I didn't. No, like, I watched the movies, but I'm not... I'm like that with any movie, though. I don't know things about movies. What they did was... You ever seen, like, a virtual museum in, like, a game where it's like... They did that with some of the old Namco games. Like, they, they added a fake museum. You could walk around. You could see the actual arcade games, and they'd have... A digital representation of like the circuit board with information about it. Okay. They did something like that for Friday the Thirteenth, but it's a lie. There's a the virtual cabins like a cabin you go to, and it's like a set up like a Friday the Thirteenth museum of sorts. Like these are some of the masks, and there's some display, and there's the character models, but it's secretly a puzzle game. Is it? Yes, but a lot of the puzzle involves your knowledge of Friday the Thirteenth trivia. Oh. So, so uh, if uh, we are ever graced by Jay again, we should play that. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Do you want Do you want spoilers for it? Mm -mm. You don't want spoilers for it? I guess yeah, spoil it for me. You but... You don't care. No, I don't. You care. absolutely. It's a big spoiler. It's a big spoiler. Yeah. Do Does Do they want spoilers for it? The chat probably already knows. Sure. If you If you don't want to know what the virtual cabin spoilers are. Mute your audio now. So I, so I, you know what? I'll give you the all clear. I'll wave my hands when it's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Spoilers now. Once you fit your reward for finishing all the puzzles, yeah. is you realize the virtual cabin is like a virtual reality cabin, and Jason X kills you, and you oh. you see a little bit of the Jason X map. Cool. Yes. Oh, that's neat. That's great. Yes. All right. Spoiler done. That's very neat. That is very neat. You big scary, scary eye. Gobbledygook says. Gobbledygook. 
old paper RPG by a guy I used to roll with, Joe Goodman. Original IP made him enough money to quit his job. Write D20. Brontosaurus, Brontosaurus Rex, the Civil War just kept going, and it was in space with dino writing. Okay. Okay. I don't um, know if I fully understand the things you were saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. But good for you. <laughs> good for him? your friend. <laughs> A lot of those things did not make sense to me. Many apologies. says, hey guys, can't think of a good Star Trek question, Great. so I hope you guys have had a very good day. Jack, when can we expect a sequel to the PP song? Uh, didn't, we, didn't we talk about, uh, you know, there was some sort of payment involved with that? Uh, sequel to the PP song. What, what was the payment? Someone, someone remind, was... remind him the off chance that somebody's rich and bored. What was the payment? We, I, we talked about it a while. A, you can make up a new one right now. I don't know. We talked. We talked about it a, a while ago. I, for, I forgot, but uh, yeah, ten thousand dollars for for the PP song. I'll, I'll make. I'll make a PP sequel. <laughs> a PP song sequel. It'll be great. Uh, I don't. I. I don't. I don't uh, people. People are. are are always talking about the poo poo pee pee song. It's like it was just this silly song that I was singing my kids when they were potty training. I was like, mm -hmm. I thought I'd make a funny video out of it. Uh, people, people get a little nuts about that. This is what happens when you make something called the pee pee song? It's the poo yeah, the pee pee poo poo or hey hey he he. I thought it was silly. Uh, I'm just not reading that. It's not the worst thing anybody has ever said, but. Eh. <laughs> <clears throat> it's just nonsense. Huh. huh. Nama says Do you guys think Return of the Jedi set a precedent for the third movie in a franchise to be shit? Also, do you think that if Return of the Jedi was a solid conclusion that Star Wars fans wouldn't suck? Here's the thing. It's not the best movie in, in the series, but it is kind of a solid conclusion. Star Wars fans are just insane and can never have enough. I think if it would have ended at Return of the Jedi, everyone would have been okay I would have been fine. It. Yes. I think everyone would have been like, hey, remember those three great movies? <laughs> you know, like... I'm, I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of... Name one of the thousands of other movies that exist on their own and not as part of a cinematic universe that are really good and don't need any other movies, you know? <laughs> what, what I have said about Return of the Jedi is that it's good where it absolutely needs to be. Uh -huh, the, the the empire the the the, the emperor stuff the okay throne room stuff that all works okay the space battle and eh, it's kind of fun I don't give a shit about Lando but you know it's a good space battle sure 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 I'm with you the Ewok stuff kind of sucks but you, you get you get your emotional conclusion to the Luke Skywalker saga absolutely yeah absolutely. I know, like a lot of people, a lot of people are mad about the Ewoks in that movie, which is fair. That's totally fair. I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't never, I was never super bothered by the Ewoks, but I get it. 
But no, it's a solid conclusion. Uh, you know, Luke becomes uh, the Master Jedi or whatever. He's dressed all in black, and Vader's like, oh, boom. Let's take it's, it. it's good enough. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. conclusion. What else do you want? What else do you want, man? Gab the Gook says, Oh, hey, how is The Surge? I hear it's like Bloodborne, but sci-fi. And they announced a Surge 2, but others said Surge 1 was boring. Like fighting and upgrading on PS4, a universe, online. Uh, yeah, so The Surge. Uh, it is. It's. It, I never actually played it. I've seen you play it a bit. You never got around to playing no. it. It is exactly like a Soulsborne game. Yeah. Uh, but in a sci-fi universe and one of the uh, the other thing that was supposed to be one of the selling points was that you could like strategically rip off robot parts of your enemies and hook them onto yourself yeah the act of doing that was actually never super satisfying and it got really repetitive really fast see see i i like the ps2 game shadow of rome where you tactically cut off people's limbs so they can't wield the sword against you. But that's that's cutting off a live limb. That's quite satisfying. Right. Oh sure. <laughs> no, and I I don't know I don't know what it was about the you know, because you could. You you cut off like oh, they had a, a gun, right? And you could cut it off and then attach it to yourself and then you would have that gun or hammer or like power, you know, different arms. But it just never felt like a significant enough of an upgrade mm. to continue doing it. Mm. Jack is actually talking about The Surge. Yes, I'm talking about the video game The Surge, which got very... What? Wait, what PS2 game? Uh, old game called Shadow of Rome. Which... A good chunk of the game is this really intensely satisfying Roman gladiator combat. And then the other part of this game is somewhat less satisfying stealth sections. <laughs> sure, sure. But, you know, you get through those quick enough, and the, the, the gladiator stuff is insanely fun. They, 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 really, they really worked appeasing the crowd into the gameplay, because if you do varied things, you get, a, you get over more with the crowd. Um. Like, they don't like seeing the same things over and over, so... It kind of encourages you to switch up your tactics and do different things, and to do things just for show. Like cut off somebody's head and then raise up the head to the crowd. And that gets the crowd going. When the crowd's going, they will throw you like better weapon and help items. So actually playing to the crowd is that's that's worked into the gameplay. That's great. Yeah. That's great. The gladiatory sections of Shadow of Rome are fucking awesome. Mm. Used to cut off other enemies' arms and beat them with their severed arms. Oh yeah, the crowd loved that. Adam Sandler says, Loving Nerd Crew, it's great. Now I'm just waiting for something like Jack or the Canadians to come on and instead of talking about the topic, just keep plugging their own shit all the time. <laughs> no, no talk about doing that specific thing. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's get Eddie to rumble, says Rich. I kid about the PUBG, but a few of us here are looking for other prereq chatters to squad slash duo with. We have a Discord server for anyone interested. Hope you don't mind the plug. No, no, I don't mind the plug. Plug it up. Plug it up. Brand Flakes 4547 says, 
I've been leaving on my things, so in the morning, when the morning bird sings, there's still dinner on my dinner jacket till the dinner bell rings. I've been leaving on my things. What is so this? in the morning, when the morning bird sings, I'm still... I'm still what? Uh, uh, let's see here. There's still dinner on my dinner jacket till the dinner bell rings. It's a They Might Be Giant song. Oh! I don't want to want the pizza. I don't want to want the pizza. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's a great song. Anonymous says, Hi guys, now that every fight scene is an ultra choreographed anti gravity matrix dance, do you ever miss di die hard style Bruce McLean sloppy elbow swings while half conscious? The fights don't feel real. No, I, I agree. There's, there's a place for ultra stylized, but something that's just, just gritty and brutal and that feels real. I, I, I enjoy that. Yeah, it de it depends on the show, like uh, or or the movie. You know, like if if you're watching Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, yeah, you want oh sure, you want the choreography, you want it to be spectacular and magical. Other days you just want to watch uh, the Road Warrior. Exactly. Other <laughs> days you just want to watch dudes <laughs> sloppily punch the shit out of each other. Absolutely. Your favorite story centric games where the mechanics aren't the draw. Well, the mechanics should always be good. If you're just doing cinematics for the sake of doing cinematics, I don't really care. But if you want a, a cinematic game that's also a good game, but I really appreciate the cinematics of them, the Arkham games. Okay. That's fair. But if, if there's not a fun game underlining your game, don't don't waste my time. I want at least I want at least a, a fun a, you know maybe not the most innovative thing ever, but at least a fun game. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Arkham is a boring series with awful combat. Oh, uh, that's your opinion. Look, I wouldn't want every game to have Arkham-style combat. I do like me some old-style combos. I mean, the Arkham combat is just designed to make you feel like a badass without actually having to do that much. Mm -hmm. But but actually performing well in the Arkham combat is satisfying. Performing at a high level, doing all the variations and, and not missing a beat yeah. is, is quite satisfying. Not missing a beat. Yeah. No, literally, it's like, it's like a rhythm game, Arkham yeah. Combat. I'm, I'm I, with you. I say don't miss a beat. I mean that literally. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you so much I wanted to emphasize that. But I, I definitely don't think it should be the only type of combat in every game ever. Mm hmm Can't you spam the reversal button and you're pretty much invulnerable all the time? Yeah, but you'd you'd play like shit. I mean, you you well you could well you couldn't do that because later in the game there's some attacks that just attacks that aren't counterable. Yeah. So it it it, it, it just spamming the the uh, parry button would not win you the game. And even if you you could get through a lot of the battles like that. You'd get a shitty score. I mean, you kind of have to. You kind of have to play the Arkham Combat for like the score, getting a high score in the actual battle, getting a lot of points. You ready for Spider-Man Arkham knockoff? No. No, Rich is not looking forward to that.
I am. I want some Spider-Man. Yes. Spider-Man is effectively a character who just gets into boss fights. Spider-Man versus Doc Ock. Spider-Man versus the Green Goblin. Spider-Man versus Venom. And they've taken up a, a combat system which does very poorly with single enemies. So you've, you've taken a character who is known for awesome fights with super criminals and you've given him a combat system that doesn't do that thing very well. And he's just, he's, yeah, he, he's known for awesome fights with super criminals, but also using that fighting method in big crowds, I think can be very satisfying. Okay. Or could be, it has the possibility to be very satisfying. What about the QTEs? That's why all the boss battles are gonna be QTE fest, because they can't do decent boss fights with that combat system. So it's all gonna be quick time event, quick time event, quick time event. It's gonna be garbage. Every boss battle is gonna be garbage. The rest of the game, the rest of the game might be okay. Yeah, yeah. But what should be your centerpieces in a Spider-Man game are all going to suck. I figured it out. Arkham had good fights aside from the car battles. Yeah, but you know what Arkham Knight didn't have? Boss battles. Find, name me one boss battle in Arkham Knight that wasn't in the fucking tank. Or wasn't a cutscene. You can do good boss fights with the system. It's just really hard and relies on unique design to work around the system. See Mr. Freeze's fight. Yeah, Mr. Freeze's fight got around the combat system not working for bosses. By not having a combat system in the Mr. Freeze fight, it's a stealth battle. Damn. The combat system does not work well for boss fights. Deathstroke was a good fight. Deathstroke was a passable fight in Arkham Origins, but it's play that fight. It's kind of a quick time fest. The, the best boss fight in the Arkham s series, and it's only one fight, is uh, Bane in Arkham Origins. And even then, they throw minions with you during that fight because mm -hmm. that's what the combat system does, minions, well, yeah. does groups really well. It worked okay for Clayface? Oh, that was a shit battle and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot comment on this. Pardon me. That's what Batman's enemies are best at, having henchmen. I'm not I'm not saying it's completely horrible. Like I said, it worked well for Batman, it worked well yeah. for those games. We're talking about how well this is gonna work for Spider-Man. Right, and, and you don't necessarily see Dr. Octopus with his octopus henchmen. That's not a <laughs> that's not a thing in the Spider-Man universe. It could have a better system. It's not... 
I'm gonna say it. Uh oh. I'm gonna say it. Uh oh. Prepare yourself. Uh oh. It's not stylistically designed to be that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not shitting on the Arkham games. I'm just critiquing one aspect of them, and yeah. I think the games work fine without spectacular boss battles. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole point of the Arkham combat system, it's just designed to make you feel like a badass who beats up large groups of people. Yes. Who are kind enough to, to, to take you on one at a time. <laughs> and not only telegraph their attack, but have a bright bl glowing button above their to, head. To be fair, if you play on hard, they don't have that. Oh, okay. Well, that's so. good. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> no, that's fair. Well, no, and... I. Uh, so, something the 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 Batman style, the Arkham style combat, is Spider Sense. Like that's all it is. Yeah. And that's why I think it could work very well for a Spider-Man right, game. All right. It it depends on how how much they want to shove those quick time events in there, though. Of course. Big, uh, it's a big question. Oh, I know. I remember. I remember game. Why is it that Dandara can't walk normally? Uh, Dandara is a celestial goddess, I think, and I also think we're in space. <laughs> There's street lamps behind you. I think we're on a big space station. <laughs> that doesn't explain why she can't walk. Um... <laughs> The, the, look, the only answer you need is because this is the way the game is designed. <laughs> oh, right, it's, right. It's a game designed around doing that. Around hopping like that. Hopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, there, I don't believe there is a proper in-game explanation. Right, why can't you jump in uh, Ocarina of Time? Right. Why can't you do that? Why That's can't Link jump? Why can't Link just have a jump button? Yeah. Right. He has to automatically jump when he when you almost fall off a cliff. Right. Right. Because the game is designed perfectly around having the auto jump. Oh, look! Oh, perfectly rush it, rush it in to defend that. Oh, can I run out of time? <laughs> like I said, said anything mildly critical. Well, this, this is a game perfectly designed around zipping along the walls, jackass. <laughs> I wasn't saying the Zelda system was horrible, you dipshit. 
<laughs> it, it worked. You know what? It worked sometimes. <laughs> and then when it didn't work, oh god, that suck. It's good to show contempt for your audience. Look, not everyone in the audience is stupid, but I, I got no patience for fools, man. Ah, look at this guy. It's one bison. Right? <laughs> Fighting the ghost of M. Bison. Head says, Hi guys. Hi! What is the origin of people always sending copies of Nuki? Also, have you heard about Quincy Jones' recent interviews? He said Richard Pryor and Marlon Brando were an item. That's. That's an interesting fact, if true. Really? I, I, I can't confirm this. Oh no, I'm just saying, like, he said that? I'm like, hmm. I, I, I don't. I can't confirm that. I'm just reading what's in the tip, Jack. That's just what someone that's said. Oh, someone, sure. Someone's saying this. I, I heard about his interview. I I only heard about like apparently he was like shit. He was like shit talking the Beatles and like just anyone he could because he's like an old man now and doesn't give a fuck. Ah. And uh, the Nuki thing, it's it's so it's called a running joke. What? Whoa. Proud Adam Sandler says. Brown Adam Sandler says, Can't believe no one asked you about this, but did you guys see the SpaceX livestream yesterday? Double relanding was brilliant, and now there's a fucking Tesla in space. I did see that, the Footage yes. is just amazing. I, I actually did not see this. What happened? Uh, SpaceX was testing out their new rocket, which uh, can now uh, take a heavier payload up to... Oh, fuck. Can and, I take a heavier payload? And this one did not blow up on launch. It didn't. Uh, they, it's been a while since <laughs> one has blown up on launch. Uh, so now, now they can take heavier stuff up into space, right? Yeah. And so this was the test of their new mega rocket, and they needed something to test it with. So Elon Musk said, "Fuck it, take my cherry red Tesla Roadster, my sports car, and send it to space." Yeah. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just amazing free publicity for him. So his his car was orbiting the Earth for a while. Then he wanted to send it to orbit Mars. Overshot it a little bit. And so there will be a red convertible in the asteroid belt now. Okay. Which is hilarious. <laughs> and then the two mega rockets, these, you know, these like mega rockets took the Tesla up. And then the two ones, you know, because they reuse the, uh, what are they called? The fuselages or whatever. They, they come back and, and land in perfect synchrony synchronicity it was beautiful good it was a it was a beautiful day for space travel and science and I know everyone's everyone's poo-pooing it not Why? Everyone, not everyone but like oh we, we have problems here and he's he's you know a rich man sends his car to space a oh, fuck yeah he did and he's rich he can do we, whatever we need he wants. to advance we need to, we need hope we, we need to get better at getting out into space absolutely. We need, we, As a fucking species, you know what else we need? A little fucking imagination up in here. We need we need some some people looking to the stars again. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Send your send your roadster up there. Do it, man. Do it. Fucking do it. So anyway, it was a good time. 
the, all this experimentation with rockets, is it is it going to be a waste someday when we have a space elevator? Uh, maybe maybe this is what will lead to the space elevator. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, right now they have made getting things to space cheaper, faster, with less risk to human life. Like, boom. Boobity boobity boom. It, it wouldn't be any good for people because of the G-forces, but just a fucking giant railgun <laughs> that could just shoot payloads directly into fucking space. <laughs> Just a, a massive fucking railgun, Jack. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Space elevators are impractical. Until you build one, then it's amazingly practical. <laughs> <laughs> you, your, your cost of going into space is, at, at that point, nothing. Space elevator would be cool, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Well, no, nothing's happening anytime soon because we've stopped caring about going into space. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say here is like this motherfucker is igniting people's imaginations, and oh, that's great. Yeah, I support it. Yeah. Map. The space elevator won't happen. Why? Fuck you. How about that? Why? Why won't it happen? A cure for polio won't happen, Rich. <laughs> I know. Just so give, stop trying. So just give up, man. <laughs> A man on the moon? That won't happen. Give up, dingus. Because you can't build it. No, we, we can't build it currently. Right. That doesn't mean it'll never happen. A, a hundred years ago, we couldn't fly. Well, I guess we could a hundred years ago. Yeah, a hundred years ago. A hundred years. A hundred and twenty years ago, we couldn't <laughs> fly. Millennials, you just don't want to go to space. You just want to sit there on your phone. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's a millennial thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm just being an asshole. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was great. <laughs> that was a great old man moment yeah, there, Rachel. Yeah. Oh, you millennials. <laughs> you don't want to go to space. <laughs> Go straight for Star Trek style transporters instead of building a tower in space. Yeah. Well, technologically, we're considerably closer to having an elevator that goes into space. So I think that's a practical place to focus your attention right sure, now. Sure, sure. Space is cold and black like most chapters. See, this is, what, this is why you go to the planets, not just the space. I know they're kind of space, but it's super so the Space is like, you know, how you get to the planets, I guess. I hate being repetitive, but the music is really loud. Okay. That's fine. I feel like the music got louder for the boss battle. Okay. There. Be repetitive. If something's bothering you, let us know. If we can do something about it, we will. This would be a lot easier with missiles. 
I was probably supposed to take his first form with just my regular blaster and then save my missiles for this. But I didn't, so here we are. Tate says, if you brought this up, feel free to ignore. Yeah, yeah, why? Uh, yeah, yeah, you would, anyways. Uh. Ever talk about the Superman comic creators from back in the day? You mean Seagal and Seagal and Schuster? Uh, brought them up a couple times. Uh, not a regular subject matter to, uh, you know. Uh... That ends pretty fucking depressingly. Yes, the story of most comic book creators ends very depressingly. It's tr it's really true. I was I was reading a book about the history of comics that, that focused on the creators. Yeah. It was so depressing I had to stop reading it by the time it got to the 80s. Oh. I just had to stop. I believe it. Yeah. I absolutely believe it. The whole book of stories stories upon stories of corporate entities prop corporate entities profiting off of the ideas of other people who died broke and penniless. Not not fun times in yeah. comic book history. Yeah. I suppose that's that's really any medium, right? Superman made billions of dollars! Seagal and Chester died penniless. Yeah, what, what was that? Was that great documentary, Batman and uh, Bill? Batman and Bill. Bill Finger basically created Batman. Bob Kane took all of the fucking credit and the money. Yep. Yep. And everything you really like about Batman created by some person you've never heard of because of Bob Kane, the dick. Oh yeah, I hate Bob Kane. Oh shit, is that true about Bob Kane? Yeah, originally Batman was gonna have like a red costume with some kind of like red motorcycle helmet. And then Bob Kane, uh, Bill Finger walked by and said, no, 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 you gotta do this. And then he drew Batman. On a whim. Like, <laughs> on a whim. On a whim. Like, like thing, things <laughs> like the Batmobile and the Bat Cave and Robin. <laughs> and, and the cowl and the ears and the color scheme and the way the cape looks with the... The swoop de doops Yep. Basically the costume. Bill Finger. Not Bob Kane. So the entire concept. Uh, basically, anything important. Uh, I think, you know, Bob Kane came up with the name Batman, right? Like... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's possible that originally he was going to use a baseball bat. I'm not sure. <laughs> Damn it. Whoa. I can go on his face? Batman become a ninja? Probably the 70s when Kung Fu was becoming a thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good call. Oh, you can jump on him? Yeah, I just I just realized that. Alright, I have missiles now, so this second zone should go a little bit faster. Doing it, Jack. Nope, I'm out of missiles. 
That actually ended up kind of a horse apiece, uh, except for now I have significantly less health. Because the missiles got me over the first area a lot faster, and I lost more health in that first area. So, shit. Well, sounds very low. Is there another thing after this? Uh, I hope not. I think I can jump on his face again. No, I cannot. Try to try to keep trying to shoot him from a distance where it's never going to work. You, you need to you need to be on. Yeah. Oh fuck. I also need I need to get better. Like your your gun charges up and then releases, and I think I'm charging for too long. So okay. it's like okay. I think I need to. You know I can I can shoot faster. But there's no uh, you know what there's not there's not like a like it's an already there's not like a little ding. To say it's ready, your gun, like ding. Speaking of Batman, which game did everyone enjoy more, Arkham Asylum, City, or Night? Well, the answer is definitely not Night, and you should be throwing Origins in that list because Origins is not a bad Batman game by any means. It's better than Night. <laughs> the the Batmobile fucking ruins Night. It does. That it does. I didn't like the Deadshot battle on Origins. Why not? That's actually a neat battle. It's another stealth one. Because they realize that the combat system doesn't work that great for boss fights. <laughs> it ain't got nothing on the Mr. Freeze battle, but it's pretty good. Mind the Batmobile honesty. Well, honestly, well, I man, that's your opinion. That's you're entitled to it. I don't, you know, I can't disagree with that. You liked it, but I can't stand the Batmobile, man. It it just shoves itself in that game. It just shoves itself up your ass, and it won't go away. And it wants to be the focus for everything, and it's obnoxious. Uh, I agree. It looks like a cat for a distance. Looks like a cat? Yeah. His head? Or the hands? Was well, the eyes and the way the nose is highlighted? It looks like a cat nose. <laughs> okay, we got a health potion, we got all of our rockets. I think the the the, the real key was uh was uh faster shooting. the Batmobile gameplay was fine by itself. There was just way too much of it. Yes! If you cut... 80? Maybe 85% of the Batmobile out of that game? You got the Makins? Okay. Son of a bitch! Go! Dr. Lubidub says, Stealth reboot for Star Wars idea. Sith and Jedi origin story and just keep making sequels to it until remaking prequel trilogy, original trilogy, and sequel trilogy. Thank you for your tip. But Kaways says, Hey guys, I recently got into prereq and have been enjoying the streams. I was wondering if Rich has ever played the MLB The Show games 
on his Bloodborne box, and if he enjoys the series, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> at, at this point, literally the only thing I have the Bloodborne box for yeah. is Bloodborne. Right. And I never really played the bigs. Uh, that was a Wii game called MLB Power Pros. They made two of them. Okay. Only two, but I enjoyed those a great deal. <laughs> it had a, a, a character creator where you could make your own baseball player. Yeah. But it was done via like a little RPG mode. Okay. <laughs> There's a little story mode and you did things that would increase various stats. And that's how you that's how you created your own player. You did it by playing this little RPG mini game. Okay. Power Pros is adorable. Hmm. No health lost, all my missiles, onto the second section. Jack, please focus for all of our six. I know, I don't want to redo this again either. I'm with you. Is this the final boss? Uh, I really hope not. because we, we just haven't been playing that long enough. You know, they give you they give you the, the little aim reticle thing for when you're jumping, but not for when you're shooting. So use them all, get... Oh, they didn't do that much damage, did they? Not really, but... I was looking at the wrong thing earlier when I thought you were doing decent damage. I guess I was looking at the missile health. How many missiles you had left. I was thinking that was his... I thought that was his health bar. Oh. I'm like, oh, you're pretty close, Jack. Oh, wow. No. No. <laughs> How did that not hit you? You fucking lucky son of a bitch. I'll take it. I'll take it. Do you need to get the little green arrow before he'll land on a platform, or can you do it from a further distance? No, you need the little green arrow. Shoot him in the face! No, not now! Help. We gotta dodge now! Fighting a losing battle here. Fighting a losing battle here! You're not gonna win with that attitude. I'm not gonna win! Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. I'm sorry. Son of a bitch. Look, my love bit says alternative history lesson number one. Lee Marvin played James Bond in the hit 1973 movie Live for Fear. What was it like? As it, was, it was terrible. Lee Marvin was a terrible Bond. There you go. There's your alternate history review. Edo Kendo says, I recently bought Sonic Mania and played it for five minutes before I remembered that I fucking hated Sonic games when I was a kid. Mm. Had nostalgia ever misguided you when revisiting games, TV, movies? Uh, there was a Spider-Man game I streamed once that didn't hold up as well as I remember it mm. when I was a kid. Sure. Uh, 
Rebel Base says, hey guys, when is the next prereq episode? Me personally, I would love to see another retro review like Zelda 2 or Sonic, maybe with Shadow of the Colossus remake, do a remaster versus remake episode. Are you, are you gonna answer? <laughs> what, what do you want me to say? Well, you know what the answer is. I've told you what my suggestion was. Yeah, yeah. And I said I was cool with it. Then we'll just do it. Yeah. You want to tell them? Do you want to? I don't you care. You tell them. I, you seem to be enjoying Slay the Spire. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. It'll be another, you know, one of those uh, early access deals because it's in early access. But yeah, we might uh, do an episode on Slay the Spire. Shit. 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 God damn it. I just give up too. So yeah, we're going to do an episode on Slay the Spire. We've been enjoying it. Why not? I'd like to make sure, you know... We keep up episodes regularly. But, I'm not pushing anything. Jack, did you ever play Superman, Spider-Man 64? Did you like it? I don't have any recollection of Spider-Man 64. Was there a Spider-Man 64? Are you thinking of Superman 64? They have to be thinking of Superman 64, because it was right. never a really Spider-Man 64. And if you're thinking about Superman 64, nobody likes Superman 64. It's terrible. Right? It's terrible. One of the few things that is objectively terrible. Isn't Spider-Man 64 just the PS1 Spider-Man? I don't... I don't think that ever got released on the 64. Anonymous says... My final sales pitch for Fallout New Vegas is to try out Old World Blues. You help brains in jars that talk with television screens escape a big empty crater that used to be a military research base. Okay. Hey. Apparently the PlayStation Sp PlayStation 1 Spider-Man did come out on the 64, according to Wikipedia. I I have literally never seen it. That's complete news to me. I don't I don't know how well it it held up, but I can tell you at the time I I liked the PlayStation 1 version. You wanted to play this shit. You could have saved your Slay the Spire game. You could have finished that on stream. Your your epic beat the game run. Uh -huh. But instead, you're going to get your ass kicked by M. Bison's head over and over again. And you know what? That's just fucking karma. It's, it's, my, you're, it's, <laughs> it's my fault. It's my fault. It's, uh, it's 100% my fault. Ah. <sighs> 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 can't upgrade it. I can't upgrade anything. Nanma says, I have a lifelong phobia of bugs. So the pit scene in Jackson's King Kong and the roach scene in Creep Show are unwatchable. Have there been scenes in movies that are too freaky for you and maybe still are? You mentioned those two? You don't mention anything about Temple of Doom? Do you remember the thing where she kind of reached into the, the thing filled uh, with bugs yeah, yeah, to grab the, oh, the lever? Yeah, yeah. And then as the spikes are coming down, like, bugs are crawling <laughs> all over Indiana Jones, too. Yeah, that was super gross. Or, like, eating the, the bug intestines at the dinner scene. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
There's a ton of gross stuff in there. In the, remember Arachnophobia? At the end of that movie, my my little brother was literally hiding under the seat in the theater. Oh yeah? yeah. Anonymous says, what if they sent you to a planet where the only way you could move was to fire a slingshot gun you could travel to? Is that something you might be interested in? Uh, no. Tired and Sad says, what would be one of the worst sequels that hurt the previous films in a franchise for you? For me, it's still Alien 3. It was garbage then, it's garbage now. Well, it's not a movie, but the only answer I could possibly give to this is Mass Effect 3. Mm -hmm. That's the only answer they want. Yeah. Because it actually does ruin the other two for me. Right. I can't think of many movies where I couldn't just ignore the, the sequel I don't like. Yeah. Fucking... The, uh... The aim is bothering me. The aim is definitely bothersome to me. I don't want to bring up Star Wars, but there's a Star Wars. Well, here's the thing. I can still enjoy the original trilogy just fine. The fact that the prequels suck, I can just, I can just ignore that they exist, and I'm fine. Yeah. Like I said, with with the uh, with the you know the original trilogy, we got a, we got a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I I got my closure. I can I can car I can compartmentalize that. I can't do that with Mass Effect because there isn't there isn't that that satis they had a satisfying conclusion. Nope, <laughs> nope. And that's 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 how it ruins the first two. Three. The first one's the closest to being like a standalone thing. Mm -hmm. It still felt like a funeral march when I went to play Mass Effect 1 month. Sure. After 3. I didn't get out of the first area. Let's see a Mass Effect movie or a Bioshock movie. Bioshock. Why are we still killing this big giant head? Because I haven't killed him yet, <laughs> dick! <laughs> been streaming for two hours. I've gotten pretty far <laughs> in the game. <laughs> working gotta, on it. I, 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 Chad, I think you got a, a lot of head to look forward to here. A lot of head. We just we're not uh, necessarily progressing in a way I would like, and I'm not. I don't see an end. I don't see. I don't see the the clearing here. Favorite video game movie, Rich. Uh, I'm pretty sure they all suck. Probably because good games weren't designed to be cinematic experiences. I got you, you M. Bison fuck. I'm 
gonna take it. I know you're being sarcastic, but I'm gonna take it. Well, I figured you were, you know, fighting that head for so long that the clap should be proportional. Absolutely. So take it. <sighs> Sorry. Damn, I'm down. Take it. I don't care. Uh, I won. That's that's a legit apology for being a little bit of an ass. Just a little just bit. A little, just a little bit. It started off sincere. And then I thought I could make a joke out of it. But it started off sincere. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Look, I get to talk to Lazuli. <laughs> Lazuli. Dandara, my dearest, you did it again. Does this game have manual saving? No. Okay. Against all odds, you defeated Augustus. In the past, the salt was in the beautiful peace. Oh, how I grieve for those days. Dandara, I have lost my strength to fight, but please, Dandara. This is far from over. Help us see those days again. I can feel it in the depths of my heart. That this is why you are here. I take <clears throat> this. Take this, Dandara. The stone of creation forged in the old days for exploring the salt. Its carrier can leap further when the creation device is nearby. This stone is a precious artifact, one of the last of its kind. It'll help you reach the further within the salt. Oh. I just like, like, that's like a Canadian accent. That's like a Uper accent. Like, oh, you must rest now, there, my dear. I am exhausted. I hope you understand. Goodbye. <laughs> <coughs> Anonymous says, hey, you too. What was up? <laughs> hey, hey, you too. What's, what's going on? Disney Corporation has been following you, uh -oh. and we really like your style. Great. We'd love for you to come in and pitch us some ideas. Absolutely. Maybe we can work together. Absolutely. I'm down. Okay. Hear me out. Okay. This is a, this is maybe not a billion idea, dollar idea, but millions, millions of dollar idea. I'm okay? with you. I'm with you. There's a lot of furries out in this world, right? Furries? There's a lot of furries in this world. You take the Disney characters All right. and you license some official Disney furry porn and they will eat that shit up. That's that's my Disney corporation pitch, Jack. Officially licensed furry porn. And I guess how like how would you differentiate this from bootleg Disney furry? It's porn? got the Disney logo on it. Right. The, the, we're gonna put some production it's, it's value into this. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get our best costume designers. <laughs> we're gonna make make the best furry outfits. I'll be honest with you, Rich. I don't think there's that big a market for it. <laughs> but I like where you're going. I like where your head's at. You're thinking outside the box. Um, so you want to play some split, Slay the Spire? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That's fine. Because when I cut this up on YouTube, we can end it on the Disney furry porn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the uh, Dandara. Ay, ay, ay.